We're not prepared for death. We're not prepared to have to bury our loved one. And if y'all can't hear me, if I'm coming up to speak to y'all, let me know. We're not prepared for this. I was doing some statistics and I saw that 960,000 to 3 million domestic violent cases happen yearly. Not only that, but on over 7 million cases are not reported or they're lied about or they're covered up as some form of an accident. Good morning, Doris. And this is me basically talking to you guys um, from my radio station here. And it's called The Truth About It. And I only get 30 minutes because that's what I requested. But today it may go a little bit over if anybody decides they would like to call in. The number to call in is 662-644-6586. A lot of us have been through domestic violence. Domestic violence is any kind of form of violence that happens inside your home. It can go on between the mother and the child. It can go on between the uh, the, the, the adults inside the home. You know, it does not only have to be between a man and a woman. It, domestic violence is family violence against each other. And we've seen a lot of cases that I was talking to my mom and she was saying how you know the children are killing the grandparents and you know the kids are killing the parents and things like that but last night it just did something to me and the reason is because a lot of us think that we can stay inside these relationships and that things will get better even when we leave the abuser we think things will get better mm -hmm. i've had a few people that reach out to me mm -hmm. hold on y'all I'm doing my uh, live talk show right now, so I have to call you back. Okay. Thank you, Doc. That was asked somebody to give me uh, information to help another domestically violent, uh, a domestically abused person. But what I want to tell you guys is that there are a lot of resources, whether we believe them or not, and some, and most, sometimes we have the family members that think, well, you grown, you can't come here. Do not always turn your back on a grown person that wants to come here. Even if they're going to go back into the relationship, some of us need solace. We need somewhere to go in order to get away from what we're going through. Last night after the young lady was uh, murdered, we took it upon ourselves to share a video that show her laying her lifeless body laying on the ground. I don't know why I continue to be amazed at what we post or what we say or what we do. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think because I I feel that human nature would kick in and that it's just some things that we just won't do. No we ain't no way that we're gonna share a body of a mom who's been murdered. There's no way that we're gonna find that entertaining. I don't wanna know what goes on in the mind of a person that takes somebody else's life, especially a person that stands over you and constantly shoots you because they don't want you to get up. They don't want you to even have a chance to make it again. They don't want you to live life without them. That is more than controlling, that is obsession. That is a person thinking that they own you. Therefore, they do what they want to do. That's worse than a person who pulls out a whip and beats you. It is not okay to be in a relationship with someone, puts their hands on you. We are grown. It's not okay. And the sad part is that when, in most cases, when the police is called, we either, we let the man, we tell the man to run. Or we, you know, after we call the police because we really just want that break. You know, we really just want him to leave us alone for just a little bit. But we don't want him to leave us alone forever. And you see what happens? Every case is not a funny story. Or every case is not a... You don't get a chance to make that up. You don't get a chance to walk away. And in cases like that, what do we do? How are we prepared? Greenwood does not have a, a women's battleship that I would know about. If we do, I think that information needs to be shared with the social workers. I think that needs to be shared with uh, the ladies in the community when they're setting up and they're going to get their, uh, like, whatever the benefits you get, or it needs to be a number that is given to the police department because the police department should give those numbers out. So we've got to the point now where we're going to arrest, exactly, Brianna, we need to get out where we can. 
we got to the point where they want to arrest the abuser. But the truth is, you need to be helping the person, the abused. But you need to help the person that is abused. I sat up last night. I just could not go to sleep. So that thing, I finally fell asleep roughly about 8 o'clock. And I'm back up because it's time to do the show. I'm going to tell you guys, I have a lot of personal experience with things. But the truth is, when it comes to domestic violence, I have myself even been the abuser because... I thought that was love. I thought if I hit you, I could make you change. I thought that if I hit you, I could make you see me differently. Or if I jump on this person, like this week has been nothing but violence. We have mothers who are wanting to fight each other over whatever the case may be. It doesn't have to be brought up. We have us out here living like we don't have children to look up to us. I've been guilty of that myself. Because you think you can make a person treat you better. By putting your hands on them, you cannot. We are not someone else's property. So if you are going through a relationship and you are being abused, there are ways to get out of it. And the police may be tired of coming to your home because you don't never press charge or whatever the case may be. But they're there to protect and serve. And I may be a little bit over. Uh, uh, I've told you, I may not be even following the topic, but last night, I and it's still part of it though, I went to the Scots up here on Claiborne in 82 and I made a post about it this is after I did the live video last night about how we were sharing the video and I just was disheartened by it and anybody that know me you guys know that I'm very outspoken but I was so torn up when we went to that store yesterday that I could not respond the way that I wanted to so we walk into the police we walk into the Scott's um, convenience store and standing there is the cashier the police officer and another cashier. So there was a white cashier here, a black cashier here, and a white police officer. She was an older lady with salt and pepper hair, and it was, uh, you know, like a really neat, like cut or whatever. And she was telling them what happened in order to inform them how sad it was and this and that. So the one cashier, she sat there, and you can tell she was really flushed by what's happening. Maybe she's going through the domestic abuse herself. And then the young lady who's our beautiful brown color says, or well, maybe she still was messing with him. As if that gives a lunatic a reason. You don't have to keep, you don't have to still be messing with somebody for them to put their hands on you. And for us to think that we have a justification or why he does it or why he did it is also disheartening. I don't care if I've never missed you alone, left you alone. You don't put your hands on me. If we cannot talk out the problem that we have, then we need to back away. Because again, everybody does not get a chance to say, I made it through. So as I was closing out yesterday, and that was the last thing that we saw, or the last thing that we all discussed before midnight, I just thought that that was sickening for us to always have a justification. Or when someone passes away, the first thing we do, we go dig up. Oh, well, you know that one none of her, uh, like uh, one of the other young ladies passed away a while ago. And they would say, well, you know she was cheating on him. Or you know she was doing this. Hey, Twee, how you doing? But it was no relation to what was going on. We find a way to even disrespect the dead. Instead of saying, oh, what can I do? Our sympathy does not last long. It just so much that goes on in our community. And we never even stop to think, really, what can we do? We may have 10 advocates. If you got 15,000 people or 2,000 people or 30,000 people, 15 advocates cannot change the mindset of 20,000 people. Last night I even had that come to Jesus talk like are you even listening? God are you listening? And today I, I just I am all over the place but it's called the truth about it for a reason. I am truthfully disgusted by the things that we see, the stuff that we participate in, the stuff that we applaud we get up and we pull out our cell phones. 
these cell phones have killed our brain cells. Literally. We pull out our phones for everything. We want to see everything. We want to be the next video that go viral. We want to be the next person that got it all. We want to be the person that, we want to be the person that get a chance to send it to everybody. Or we want whatever it is that embarrass somebody. We send out everyone's sexual episodes. We send out the ranting and the ravings. We sit down and we discuss it. You know, and you say, oh yeah, that was funny. Such, such, said this and that. But when do we say, but when do we stop? Our community has so many things that's going on that's not fair to us. We go through racism. And every time something happened in Greenwood, because that's where I'm at, we always make it a black or white issue. Earlier this week, we debating about speakers that was in the making for 11 years. But we find a reason to get on to a site and we decide to make it a black and white issue, a South Greenwood, a North Greenwood issue. When the truth is, when you want funding for books, you need to go to the school board. But we want to blame one person for everything that's wrong. Everything. What can you do to change your community? What can you do to make sure that your children have something better? All of it just had me with my head in my hand. Sometimes like the prayers. Felicia, I was told this morning that I wear everybody's issues on my sleeve. I do. I wear it because it's too much. But to see the video last night after the young lady passed away. And I get, I said, I'm all over the place. And I don't care if you can't follow me, you can't follow me, you can't, you can't. But to me, all of this stuff just ties in together. It's about our moral compass. It's about how we feel toward each other. But for any person to think it's okay to walk up to a young lady, or even a young man, and record their body. lifelessly laying on the ground and we have enough sense to press sin that's very sick I said a lot of us have been through some relationships in our life in our younger life so we really can't talk bad about it but we can say I made it through this is one person that does not get a chance to say that I made it through yeah, I went through that abusive stuff, and girl, let me tell you, you don't. She don't get that. She does not get that opportunity. She does not get what we all got. The ones that got a chance to walk away, she does not get it. On one of my videos yesterday, we had a young lady who said that she knows about it right now. That's being domestically abused, but she can't do anything about it because she's six hours away. What can we do as a community? How do we come together? Like I said, I've been abused before. I even became the abuser after I was the abused. And a lot of times we don't tell our story because we feel like, well, you know, this out of sight, out of mind, and he and I are not together no more, and I don't want to make him feel bad because he may not be that person he was when we was 20 years old. But I'm going to tell you guys that when I was 20, the funny, you know, I... I was around domestic violence my whole life. So a lot of times we think that if he hit us, he love us. Because then he got to love me because he hitting on me. Now, so if he don't hit you, then he don't love you. So I'm like, that's kind of confusing. But I know love don't hurt. Love does not leave you black and blue or deceased. So this one morning in particular, I was got to go to work at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I get out there at 1, and he goes to work from 3 to midnight. But we used to fight all the time. I mean, all the time. Pulling each other all out the house fighting. We used to live across the bow. And uh, this one day in particular, I had cooked the food and stuff like that. And what I normally do is I put the food in the microwave. Uh, even though I had to be at work at 5 o'clock, I get up about 11.50 because I know he get off at 12. 
I put the food in the microwave. I turn the food on. So I make sure that it's good and hot. So by the time he get home, you know, he get his food. I will have his bath water ran and everything. But this day, I had cooked some greens. And I didn't clean the greens right. So the greens had like little rocks in them. And uh, he wanted me to get up. So he come in and fussing about what had happened at work. And I was like, I'm tired. I don't feel like talking today. So he... He go into the kitchen and he get his food out the microwave. He still ain't took his bath yet or whatever. Something that would have calmed him down. And he said, these greens got rocks in them. And I said, don't eat it. You know, it's barbecue chicken on there. Eat the macaroni or whatever. Eat whatever else is on the plate. So he threw the plate at me while I was laying in the bed. And get up, I'm trying to talk to you. I didn't want, I just didn't feel like talking. I didn't feel like fighting. I didn't feel like doing anything. I just wanted to go to sleep. So we had this really big we had this uh california king size bed and the, the bed was almost b too big to be inside the room so there was about this much space on one side of the bed about that much space on the other side of the bed and he grabbed me i don't even know how he did it but he flipped me out the bed and i was stuck in between a little bit of crawl space in between the bed and the wall and while i was stuck because I'm, I'm i'm short i'm five foot two he came down to my back and i heard my back crack so, all I can do was holler in pain. And you would think that that would have made him stop because you can hear my back crack. But instead, when he snatched me from between the bed and the TV, and the bed and the wall, he continued to jump on me like I'm laid out on the floor and he's jumping on me while I'm laid out like he was possessed. And I remember laying there that I just said, and you know, last night I told you guys I just felt like God's not listening. But this day in particular, I said, if you see this and you let me live, I will never come back. The abuse went on for about a good little bit over an hour. I'll never come back. Never come back. I don't care if I'm hungry. I don't care if I'm homeless. I don't care if whatever. I could be broke. I would never come back if you let me live. I can remember blacking out and stuff like that. And, and this is my own experience it's telling you guys, describing what happened. But it's like I stand over my body saying, this is what you want. A man that attacks you even after he has knocked you out. It's, my face was folded like a pumpkin. And the abuse had just it had got to the point where I just didn't have any fight left in me. But another time, anybody that know me know that I'm ready to fight all the time. I'm ready. I'm ready. I had no fight left in me. And that literally was the last straw. And I remember just laying there. So when I when I did come back into my remembrance, he was like, get up. I couldn't get up. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Get up. I could not get up. So after he realized that he had actually broke my rib, <laughs> and that he had actually... Jumped on me, I'm calling my daddy. My daddy couldn't even do nothing to him because after he jumped on me, my daddy came over. And he said, I can't do nothing to him, that grown man that crying. The grown man in here crying is the reason why my daddy could not do nothing to the man that jumped on his daughter because the same man that was man enough to beat me down was not man enough to stand up to my father. He was crying like a baby. Oh, I'm so sorry. What were you when you was attacking me, though? I've had my hand broken, I've had my feet broken, and I had my ribs cracked. But at that moment, my child is in another room while you are attacking me. I said, if you let me live, I don't care if I'll be broke, homeless, hungry. I have been all of those things since I left, and I did not go back. That was it for me. But some people do not get a chance to realize was that it? That's it for me turns out to be one more time. Or because we had our own place and I ain't had to go add nobody for nothing. Or he paid all the bills in the house. Or he paid a light bill. Or he paid a gas bill. Or he do this and he do that. And we make it a reason to go back. Well, I'm just I ain't going to talk to them more, but I'm going to ask them for something else. Every time you think about asking an abuser for something, you pop your own self on the hand. Because when you open that hand up to take it, you open the door up for more abuse. 
and you will not get a chance to give this story. Although when you pass, you still have given a story to somebody, but there's still some young lady out there that's afraid. She's still taking the abuse. And I want you to know that if you have been in a relationship and you can take abuse, you are stronger than you think you are. Because a lot of us can't do it. And I see on here that we do have, like Felicia is giving us some of the stuff that happened to her. And I just want you guys to read that. We are stronger than we think. But for a man to think that it's okay to put his hands on us or beat us unconscious or kill us is too much. And I said domestic violence is more than against the person that you're dating. Domestic violence occurs when you are outrageously beating your kids. Another domestic issue happened in Canton, Mississippi, where the mom had an 11-year-old child living in a cage. He was in a cage for so long that he did not grow. Three foot four, have not grown because the mom did not let him out the cage except to beat him. Starved them to death. We see it in all aspects of life, but we say nothing. When do we not? That's the crazy part. Is that we don't say nothing when we need to say something. But when we should say nothing, we say, send me the video. Oh, girl, have you heard? What does the gossip do for the child that is going through? Nothing. Who does it say? Nobody. I am here to stand in the gap because I will not allow someone to be bullied around me. I won't allow it. What would you do to stop it? When do you say, when do you, because we are so afraid of not being different. We don't get onto these timelines and say, why y'all sharing that? Why are y'all talking about that? See, I can care. I lose a lot of people because I'm honest. I'm going to be me all day, every day. You don't like it. It's okay. But we, as human beings, should take that one part of us that sit and tell our friends on the phone, girl, they wrong for that. Be that same person on social media. Be the person that says, can we not do this today? Be the person that says, whatever it is that you're going through, I'm here for you. Be that person that said, girl, even if you're going to take him back and you need a couch to sleep on tonight, I'm here for you. When I don't want to hear what y'all been through today, I don't want to hear because you may take him back. I don't want to hate him because you may take him back. But I'm here. I got a blanket. I got an extra pillow. If the kid is coming, he can sit on the floor or whatever the case may be. I'm here for you. If something is not right with us, when we can sit around and try to figure out what happened when a person has already passed away, what happened is that nobody else stepped in. And I've told my child, I said, you know, we should not get involved in another person's domestic uh, disputes because they may take them back. I feel that way. But after what happened last night, I feel like a long time ago, somebody should have stepped in. And the bad part is that we continue to be, we, we're there for the person. You don't want to leave them so isolated to the point where they think that he is all they got. It really just becomes confusing. What can we really do? How can I really help? There are not enough solutions on that. I'm lost. Because I don't think there's nothing that nobody could have done differently besides her. And I think she tried to do something differently and he didn't like what she did. That's really all we can do. Say, so girl, I, I can't tell you what to do in your relationship. But I can tell you this, that any time that you want me to listen to you, you need to call me at 3 o'clock in the morning, call me. If you need me to 
come over and there's no problem with me coming over, I'll come over. Because most times we need somebody to talk to. The truth is we can solve our own problem if we can just talk about it out loud. But we come from the place where I don't want to talk about it. I don't want I don't want nobody else to know what I'm going through. I don't want you to tell nobody else what I'm going through. No matter how close you think you are to somebody, you can't be close, that close. If you say nothing or if you do nothing. I'm not telling you to jump in it and try to help her fight him. I'm saying when that gun was pointed toward her, when the first shot was made, could we have called 911 immediately? First shot or the first leap. When they at home and they fighting, you're the next door neighbor. Can't you call the police and say that our neighbors are fighting? Close your mouth to domestic violence. Close your mouth to any type of violence. It's not good. You may not want to be the snitch in our community, as you say, but a snitch probably could have saved her. But instead, we think it's okay to talk about it to other people. Girl, he over there jumping on her. I don't know why she couldn't take him back. That would never be me. You never know who can or will be you. I said, my talk show is only 30 minutes. And I'm coming up on the 30 minute mark. And if I didn't say anything else that you would stick with you, I want you to understand me when I say the Mr. Violence is not okay. And if we have any young ladies or young men that think it's okay to be in those domestically violent situations, they must think that there's nowhere else they can turn or nobody else they can turn to or they must be used to abuse, not just from this abuser, but from many abusers before them. Because for me to think that it's okay to stay in a relationship like this, it must be better than the last relationship or the previous relationships that I have had. But the best could also turn out to be the worst. Just because he pays bills, go get you a job. Just because he make those ends meet, go back to school. Just because you don't have the extra dollar or whatever you get, find you a side hustle. Do not be dependent upon your abuser because that gives them the power that you sometimes you can't get back. Flee in the middle of the night if you have to. You got a car, get in your car one day, say I'm going to the store. Get all the kids. You ain't got to pack everything up. There's nothing wrong with starting over again. I've started over again several times. Fill your gas tank up and say, I'm not going to stop until I run out of gas. And when I run out of gas on this good Monday morning, I'm going to find me a police department and say, do you guys have a battered women's shelter? And I'm going to tell y'all something else too. You can have a battered women's shelter. You can have any kind of women's shelter. But they may not let you stay if you got a child that's over the age of 12 years old. So that is something else. The city or the government would like to make us think that we have resources but sometimes we don't. Or is there any way that me and my kids can stay with homeless? This is my idea. I've come from this place. I decided to get in my car and keep driving until I ran out of gas. Some just said hit 82, hit 55, hit 20, hit whatever until I run out of gas. All I had on me was my wallet, a few dollars, and my kids. But I got out of that domestically toxic relationship. If you're going through something, you may not have a car. But you might have a friend that say, yeah, let's go ride. Do you mind helping me just get away? Me and my kids, can you take us somewhere? I'll fill your tank up. And when you get there and stop, we're going to get out here. We're not coming back. When I, I change my number and I'll call you later. Your friend ain't going to want to leave you. 
But the thing is, I'm going through what I'm going through, what I'm going through. And I just need to clear my head. So you know people that's going through that, and a lot of us are going through it, 30s and 40s and 50 year old, because we think we don't deserve better. You deserve better. So whatever you have to do to get out of it, I don't care if you have to go and buy you a mega bus ticket, tell your friends, take you to Alabama, you got to catch a ride to Texas or whatever to confuse somebody, you reached out to your family and I don't know, Kalamazoo. But when folks are going through something, do not feel so bad to the point where I can't call nobody. Or don't be that friend that say, girl, you can come, but you can't bring those kids. Don't be that friend because you could save her and her children's life. He had a black man who, who stabbed his girlfriend and her three children. One of the kids was a couple of weeks old. How do you stab a child that is a couple of weeks old? He killed the woman. He killed the, his three, the three kids she got by him. Laid them in a blanket in the middle of the floor and left the house. This happened this week. Young lady in Georgia decided to take her kids and she made it to the fast. The first she could make was to the fire department. She couldn't even make it to the, to the police department. He killed her in front of the fire department with her children in the back seat. These cases are happening every day. If you can do something to stop it, stop it. You don't have to let everybody know that you're trying to escape the situation. Reach out to somebody far enough away where he can't get to you. Have that one friend that he don't know that you have. Girl, I know we ain't talked in 12 years. But I, I've been wanting to reach out to you because I'm going through a lot of stuff in my life. And if you say I can just come to where you are, I will find a way for me and my kids to get there. If you can meet us halfway, I'm going to catch the Greyhound bus station. I'm going to catch the mega bus to whatever closest city. If you can just come pick us up, meet me there. I don't know what it is that you're going through, but you will save my life tremendously if you would give me somewhere to stay. I promise I won't be a burden on you, but I need to leave this situation right now because I think if I stay one more time, he going to kill me. If I leave, he going to kill me. I'm gonna leave. He going to kill me whether I'm here or whether I leave. Have some compassion, y'all. Because it takes some of us a lot longer to learn than it takes the rest of us. Everybody don't get it at 21. Everybody don't get it at 25. Some do not get it at 36. Some people are still going through domestic abuse 60 years later. Because it is what it is. But it's not. So you can be the person that listens. Or you can be the person that helps. We do. I'm going to tell you that that gossip can, it can go two ways because sometimes it's not gossip. Sometimes it is us talking about it to see, get a resolution. But when it's malicious, it's gossip. When it's lies, it's gossip. I want y'all to know that uh, every show that I do, it is sponsored by my insurance company which is write my policy now. And the thing that made me, I'm going to tell you what made me start selling insurance is that we had so many go fund me that I said, this is something that our people need. We need to have this. But we do. Every person, I don't care how old you are, from 17 days old, because it's the earliest you can get it, to 100 years old, we need life insurance. Unless you have that money put to the side to bury you. Because as surely as you live, you shall die. The only thing is that we don't know what's going to be our demise. We don't know if it's going to be a car uh, accident. We don't know if it's going to be natural causes. We don't know if it's going to be domestic violence. We don't know if it's going to be sudden infant death syndrome for the children. But we need to be covered, especially for stuff like this. Because, see, the community come together to try to bury you just so they can get in your business. What happened to it? What really happened? This is what I heard happen. If the money that you give me comes with what happened, keep your money. If you have a friend or a family member that is going through a domestic dispute 
if they're sitting around you guys and they're always fighting that a couple that you don't want to be around because you know they're going to tear the house up. When you get a chance to talk to whomever, you need to ask them what's really going on. Do, is this going to change at all, ever? Just to put something on your mind, last night a young lady lost her life and it was senseless. Today a young lady lost her life and it was senseless. Yesterday the same thing happened. Tomorrow the same thing happened. The only thing that can change that is the person that's in the relationship and the person that's looking at the relationship. So find a way to help somebody. And with that being said, I ran over my 30 minute window. If you guys are ever not busy on Fridays at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time or whatever time zone you're in, we're always here. I would love for you guys to start calling me. I do know I have a couple of radio followers, and I thank you for thank you for helping it grow continuously. Tanya said, let me read at least a couple of these comments. I've told the person I am in a relationship with, I have went through, and what, uh, what I have went through and what I've been, what I've seen, my mom go through. I don't like it and whether or not I go through it again, what happened, they lied and I had to leave eventually. Okay, and I know I didn't read that right because I'm not asleep. I'm sleepy a little bit. But I'm going to tell you that we all have to leave. At some point in time, I don't care how many kids you got. I don't care how much money you don't have. I don't care whatever it is. Whatever you can do to get out of a bad situation, get out of that situation. If you see like that, won't nobody else help you? I'm telling you that when you go into these new cities, people will help you because you're homeless. They do have places you can go. You can call 411 when you're in the city. They will direct you to places. The only thing that is is sometimes, based off the ages of your children, you may not be able to go to certain places. I'd rather be out of a relationship in a bad way than to be in a relationship and that be the last day I live. So, but what I was summing up before I did read the, the comment is that I'm here every Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. The name of the talk show is called The Truth About It. Uh, I have told you guys where you can tune in to. If you're going through something, you can always inbox me and I can see if I can find some resources. Today, I was trying to see if we could pull some resources together. If you know any people that are in the social work field, and uh, that's it. It's 211. Thank you, uh, Carmela. It's 211, not 411. But if you know anybody that's in the social work field and they may have some kind of suggestions on what we can do, let's get together to save the females, the males, or whomever in this community. With that being said, tune in and catch me, y'all. Let me get out there. Thank y'all for watching.